Laura, it's a scorching hot Saturday in Columbia as the Coastal Carolina Shauna Clears have come across the state to play the Gamecocks. SEC football presented by Allstate. Saturdays in the SEC are back and it starts with Sandstorm. Ninety degrees at kickoff, feels like ninety-five, well over one hundred on the field. Matt Stenchcom, Chris Button, and Taylor Zars are fired up to be back with you for another season of SEC football here on Saturdays on SEC Network. And immediately, number one is back in the lineup for the Gamecocks. Debo Samuel with three career kick returns for touchdowns, two last year is back, he is healthy, and he is waiting, Stinch, right there at the five-yard line. Well, that's gonna strike fear in the hearts of every opposing team that takes the field versus South Carolina. Number one is a weapon. And he gets the football through the middle of the field, and there's traffic at the 35-yard line. With Matt Stinchcomb, I'm Taylor Zarzer. Chris Buttons on the field. You'll see her in just a minute. Stinch from three wins to six wins for Will Muschamp in year one to nine wins last year. Now the goal is to win the SEC East. Absolutely. Well, I mean, if we continue on this trend line, you end up with 12 victories, right? And I think the biggest area of progress that South Carolina is going to have to make is on the offensive side of the football. We're going to get to see it right now. A lot of changes were made towards the end of last season. Obviously, a change with the play caller. Brian McClendon, a first year play caller, that philosophy, they want to be more up tempo and they want to play to the strengths of their players and especially their quarterback and Jake Bentley. They have the weapons on that side of the football. Now can they complement what was a defense that was really what propelled them to a nine win season in 2017. There was an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on South Carolina that went on Shamik Blackshear. So South Carolina has the football at their own 20-yard line, and Bentley immediately with a toss ahead to Debo, and Debo breaking tackles gets near the 30. Bentley, the junior, by way of Opelika, Alabama, where he played his high school football, but he's a South Carolina kid. His father, Bobby, of course, the legendary high school coach at Burns High School for a number of years, winning four state championships. Trying to limit those turnovers this season. This is Rico Dowdle who's battled injuries each of his first two years in Columbia. Will Muschamp says he's his best back. He gets him a first down. Also already in this game for South Carolina, their three most important playmakers, they've touched the football. Obviously, Bentley's going to get every snap. A carry for Dowdle early for positive yards. And, of course, Debo Samuel on the fly sweep. Bentley, middle of the field, wide open is Debo. He's hit up at the 47-yard line. First down, Carolina, after a 14-yard reception for the senior. You see the versatility that number one brings to this offense. We talked to Will Muschamp yesterday in his office, and the question was, what does he bring? More than just the yards, and he brings plenty of those. And he said confidence. And you've got a guy like number one in your lineup, it elevates the confidence of all the teammates in that offense. Hand off to Rico, and he's past midfield into Shauna Clear territory near the 45-yard line. Almost eight more for the junior from Asheville, North Carolina. Missed five games last year for the broken leg. Came back for the Outback Bowl and was the team's leading rusher in that game at eight touchdowns as a freshman. You'll see A.J. Turner, who started the most games for the Gamecocks in the backfield last year, as well as Tyson Williams, two-headed monster for Coach Muschamp and running backs coach Bobby Bentley. Second and short, Bentley underneath, dropped by Dowdle out of the backfield. They're rocking and rolling up until then. The protection has been superb. See, Coastal, they're committed really to only four rushers. They're not adding to that pass rush. Clean pocket. 
And one of the elements that we really haven't touched on yet, albeit early in a successful drive, this offensive front for South Carolina could afford them offensively all kinds of latitude from a play calling standpoint. Cox were 38% on third down last year. Across the middle, open is Ortre Smith, the sophomore from Mount Pleasant, gives the Gamecocks the first down. Throw a catchable ball. You stab it in there, you got a big target in Ortre Smith, and he just lays it out there, does Bentley. Smith able to convert on that third down. And so much was made about tempo. They don't have to go fast to impact the defense. You can see South Carolina jumping the ball but not necessarily snapping it right away. 11 more inside the 35. Dowdle inside the 25, inside the 20, still on his feet. First and goal, Gamecocks. Now, I mentioned the offensive front earlier. They are asserting themselves early in this game. You see big Zach Bailey pulling around from his left guard spot, but Jacob August there on the edge as well. The tight ends. Doing a good job on the perimeter. 29 on the last play. A few here right to the doorstep. Touchdown. Rico Dowdle gets 34 yards on the last two plays of the drive, and the Gamecocks come out firing on the first possession of the season. Well, the offense can't start any hotter than that. You get your playmakers the ball, you muscle your way down there, stab it in there on a couple of passes, a third down conversion, and you come away with a touchdown on your opening possession. Seven yards, 14 yards, eight yards, 29 yards, five yards. That's a pretty stat line. Gamecocks firing on all cylinders on the first drive. Let's say hello to our friend Chris Button on the field. Hey, Taylor, there's been a lot of talk about how the field would look today after they had to tear it up and relay it after the Jay-Z Beyonce concert about a week and a half ago. They laid 90,000 feet of this Bermuda sod. I've walked around. It looks good. There are some seams, a couple divots, but nothing kind of significant. Will Muschamp had his team out here Thursday for a short practice so they will get used to playing on it. They don't have any special cleats on today. Will Muschamp said he'd do it all over again if it meant they could all go to another Jay-Z Beyonce concert. Big time. <laughs> there nine days ago. Hey, you, you got to respect the hustle, right? I mean, how about the grounds crew? They had to take this whole thing up and relay it. That's impressive. Heck of a turnaround. And he, he was serious. No big deal meeting with us yesterday about that as Parker White Kicks it deep to the Shauna Clears. And they will get it at the 25-yard line. You know who's at that, at that concert? Let's go to the studio and Peter Burns. <laughs> Thank you, Taylor. It was a good concert. I'm actually looking for fireworks here as well. How long would it take Ole Miss to score against Texas Tech? How about 30 seconds? DK Metcalf, 58 yards to the house. Two plays, 69 yards. That's a nice score, 7-0. Toddy Toddy feeling it there at the beginning of the game in Houston. My oh, man, DK Metcalf, he's grown. That, I mean, that's the son of a former All-American offensive tackle that can run. Ole Miss's receivers are dudes. Yes, they are dudes. Not just guys, dudes. <laughs> Marcus Outlaw in the backfield for Kilton Anderson, the quarterback in the Shauna Clears, and already a flag. Live game. Offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Mark Perlis, our SEC official today, as the Shauna Clears try to get started here on what will now be a first and 15. Well, you come out here, you get punched in the mouth pretty early in this game. And head coach Joe Mowgli has said, look, I anticipate South Carolina being, at the end of the season, a top-10 team. You don't want to open your offensive possession with a penalty like that. Milton Anderson played in six games last year for the Shauna Clears. And the throw on the first play and is underneath to Malcolm Williams, and he gets free down on the sideline. There is a flag again. This stands. It's a big game for Coastal of 24 yards. They're going to find ways to get Malcolm Williams the football. Probably their best player. During the run, holding number five offense. 
10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. You see it right here on the edge. And it's easy because you end up getting a couple of handfuls of jersey. The officials are going to get that just about every time. Negates a 24 yard gain and instead back at the 21 yard line. You see Anderson from Naples, Florida. Team did go two and one in his starts last year, even though their overall record was three and nine in Coastal's first season of FBS play. A little confusion there as he puts the ball in the belly of Marcus Outlaw, the transfer from Boston College, who gets it up to the 25, tackled by big Javon Kinlaw. I think we're going to say that a lot this year. Javon Kinlaw is a guy, he's going to stay on the field for South Carolina for all three downs. He's not a guy that they said are going to take him off. He can pass rush. He's got that ability to collapse the pocket inside out for a big body that can anchor in the run game. If you've got a defensive tackle that can do both, you've got a significant weapon along your front. Actually down 40 pounds from last season. Eliminating Chinese food and pizza from his diet. Here's an option pitch up near the 29 yard line. And that'll set up a third down as Kion Tyler takes it. Joe Mowgli is in his sixth season as the head coach at Coastal. He took a medical sabbatical last year. Jamie Chadwell, who was the interim head coach, going three and nine in the FBS. Mowgli, the chairman of the board at TD Ameritrade. So much success off of the field. Did take the shots to the FCS playoffs four times when they played at that level. Watching his team on the third and seven here. They clock down to one. Just gets it off. No chance around the edge. Outlaw pushed out of bounds. No gain on the play. Bryson Allen Williams is healthy, and he takes Coastal off the field. You see Bryson Allen Williams, number four. Does a great job because his eyes were inside, but he's able to adjust laterally and keep from getting flanked. You talk about a loss last year, Debo Samuel on offense, but when Bryson Allen Williams went down versus Kentucky, South Carolina lost an excellent edge player on third downs. You saw it right there, his athleticism in space. Ryan Edwards, who was terrific as a receiver last season, is back as the punt returner here, and he takes it at the 28. Runs into his own man and is tackled at the 30-yard line. Gamecocks already feeling it on offense, coming on the field for their second drive. Shauna clears, practicing so close to the beach, about 25, 30 minutes away from campus, the Atlantic Ocean. That's always nice. Do a little warm up there in the ocean and the waves. That's awesome. Well, where do you go to for spring break if you go to school on the beach already? You go to like some crummy town? <laughs> you go inland to the mountains, I yeah. guess? Some sad little urban area so you can appreciate that you go to school in a resort locale. Shonda Clears used to be part of the South Carolina school system and broke away and got their own independence back in 1993. Impressive what Joe Moglia has built at the FCS level, but with this transition to the FBS level, now in the Sun Belt, really young roster. This defense got pushed all over the field the first time the Gamecocks had the football. Tyson Williams runs into it near the 30-yard line. Brian McClendon is the new offensive coordinator this season for South Carolina, promoted from being the wide receivers coach Brought in Dan Werner to be their quarterback coach. Stinch, beside, despite a nine-win season, this offense was one of the worst in the SEC. It was. I mean, they really survived on defense and opportunistic plays off the of turnovers. Otherwise, they knew they had to be more productive offensively. Underneath throw is a good one. Caught by Brian Edwards up at the 35. You know, part of what made that first drive go so well for South Carolina and for BMAC up there as a play caller was the first down efficiency. The worst play they had on the opening play of each fresh set of downs was five yard gain. 
Now here, obviously, they're having to chip away a little bit more. Only the second, third down they faced in this contest. To get to the 41. Right side to Smith, makes a man miss. What a show of athleticism there by Shy, who had an outstanding freshman season first down. Easy pitch and catch right here. As you see, Shy Smith is a guy that can make a play for you after he has the ball in his hands. You don't have to run a route deep enough to convert the sticks. Let him make a man miss. And of course, he's going to do that a lot this season. Sophomore from Union, South Carolina, the 53 yard touchdown catch against Michigan. Play action. Now to Williams out of the backfield. Look at that. Hurdles a man inside the 40 yard line to the studio in Peter Burns. All right, thank you, Taylor. Your tech guys talking about Debo Samuel being electric. How about Ole Miss's Jalen Jones, third in the SEC in return yards last year? And whoop, whoop. He gone. That's right. Ole Miss 14 to 7 in a game that may have 9,000 points. Back to you guys in Columbia. What's the over under on how much longer stints that game lasts than this one? You'd say an hour and a half longer? <laughs> at least, yeah, at this rate, you know, if Tyson Williams keeps making runs, he and Rico Dowdle, then uh, I think that there's a real good chance they continue. Now, Williams just left the field, and A.J. Turner back in the lineup. I that was due to injury there after that hurdle. Already using all three of Coach McClendon and Muschamp's tailbacks, and there's no drop off whatsoever. First down, Carolina inside the 25, 17 there for Turner. It's an attitude run. You got a lead block up inside in the A gaps. Those are the gaps on either side of big Donnell Stanley. He did a great job getting downhill. Make them this time, and it's Debo dragged down near the 16-yard line. Two string tackle by Mallory Claiborne. You see him rolling guys in and out. A lot of tight ends in these formations and the personnel groupings early on. Something that the coaching staff said we might see a lot of. Casey Crosby coming in now at tight end. And to be able to look out there and see number one. If you're a play caller, you know that you've got a multi-purpose tool that can break open a game at any moment. And to your point, the whole team exudes confidence with him out there on the field, and they hand it to him this time. They did it a lot of, of that two years ago, and he's inside the five, first and goal. Line him up in the backfield. You know, it's fine, Debo. You better know where number one is at all times. So he offset him in the backfield and let him capture the perimeter once again. We've seen him now two touches in the run game. You better believe that with this more suffocating pace, you're going to be able to sub. The defense had time to sub. The personnel changed there that time offensively for South Carolina. But it's the suddenness, the urgency that they're able to rattle off plays. And next thing you know, you've got their playmaker in the backfield. Drop football on the ground. It looked like Bentley might have gotten it back. What a bad snap it didn't look like initially, but the ball turned over. And it looked like Bentley just didn't feel it quite cleanly. A little bit low, and you see the ball turn over a little bit. As Donnell Stanley kind of shoots it back there, and part of it was, too, he's got a back block. And when you're a center and you're blocking towards a tight angle to the left or to the right, that can impact the trajectory and location of your snap. Loss of four. Bentley, pocket collapses, underneath throw, caught, oh. touchdown, Tyson Williams. Talk about improvising. Bentley got a big block from Keel Pollard, and Williams had wide open space. And it's a touchdown, 13, make it 14 nothing with Parker White's extra point. Bentley, eight of nine, 76 yards and a touchdown. He's found six different receivers. Tyson Williams hurdling men. 
and then Keel Pollard in the end zone. Gamecocks up two scores. Teams might be South Carolina Gamecocks off to a terrific start against in-state rival Coastal Carolina. This is only the second ever meeting between these two schools that used to be affiliated with each other. Gamecocks beat them 70 to 10 here in Columbia five years ago. Parker White. Kicks it over the end zone. And the Shauna Clears will start at their own 25 yard line. Coastal Carolina, look at this roster. They have 67 freshmen, Matt, on the team this year. It's just so difficult, you know, especially when you're playing up. This is a power five team that they're facing now. You see, last year was rugged for them, largely because of Joe Mowgli, right? You don't have your leader, health issues, but part of it, too, is the roster turnover. That's a lot of young faces that are going to have to take the field this year for the Shawna Fears. Pick to finish last in the Sunbelt East Division. That conference will have a championship game for the first time. Hilton Anderson runs for six, stopped by Keir Thomas. Yeah, they want to just, at this point in time, see if they can't slow the game down a little bit. You open up your first offensive possession with a penalty. So it's hard to dig back out. This man has been around a lot of football with Joe Moglia. He knows what you have to do to have success or even be competitive in environments like this. We need to see if they can't maintain possession of this football a little bit, let their defense regroup. It's underneath the Outlaw, and Outlaw's right at the sticks. Could be a first down for the shots. It's always a tough decision, right? You understand it from a business standpoint, why a really successful FCS program would make the move to the FBS level, but you are completely hitting the restart button when you decide to play with the big boys. And you can see that because of that overhaul from a roster standpoint, you have to have a forward-looking perspective. You can't expect to right now have a great deal of success knowing that you only have 11 seniors available to come out there and play for four quarters on Saturday. Option play, Anderson keeps it himself, and he is dinged up at the 39-yard line by Rashad Fenton. You can stream college football all season long on ESPN+. Plus. So start your free trial today by downloading the ESPN app or visiting ESPNplus.com. Or I can just give you Greg McElroy's login information if you want. These guys, has he Pass that along to everybody. I, I wish you would. Maybe we could font that on the screen. <laughs> so generous of Greg to offer. I'm sure he would appreciate that. Outlaw and James in the backfield with Anderson. That used so many option principles. This time he throws right side and it's caught. That is Jeremiah Miller down the sideline for another Shauna Clear first down. You see, move the pocket a little bit. And Kilton Anderson has taken some serious shots, and I mean physically, not just shots downfield. Did a good job that time throwing on the run. Narrowly missed that ball going the other direction, though. With a great job, Jeremiah Miller breaking the tackle and able to pick up positive yards and the shots doing exactly what they needed to with this possession and moving the sticks. So the new quarterback in, the freshman Bryce Carpenter from Venice High School in Florida, hands in front on a sweep. To the left side, that's Larry Collins out of bounds for a couple. This kid Carpenter was an early enrollee over in Conway, South Carolina. It was Mr. Football in Florida last year. And how about this, Matt? This is not a typo. He scored 137 touchdowns in high school. That's pretty sporty, huh? Busy man. Goes back to the sidelines after one play. And clearly, he's the future for Joe Moglia. But back to the current and Kilton Anderson. You see the shots using multiple formation sets. This time in that diamond formation, three backs in the backfield with Anderson. Trouble with the snap straight ahead, though. Marcus Outlaw has no trouble running behind his offensive line for a first down. The defensive coordinator, Travaris Robinson, we were talking with him yesterday. He mentioned playmakers, but he also said part of the challenge will be 
It's the first game of the season. We've got some guys in there. we got to make sure that their eyes are where they need to be, that they're lined up where they need to be. And there's a lot of eye candy. There's a lot for this defense to process. We've seen multiple formations. We'll see orbit motions. That was one of the things that Coach Robinson wanted to make sure his team was ready to play, cleats in the ground when the ball was snapped. Alex James straight ahead inside the 35, stopped by DJ Wanham for three. You can see the shots having a little bit of success on some inside run concepts. They're creating angles with their offensive front. This is a salty defensive line for South Carolina. You're not just going to talk a truck them off at the line of scrimmage, so you better create some type of advantage for your offensive linemen. You're seeing a lot of pin and pulls where the adjacent linemen will block down and then one will loop behind and around and climb up, almost like a lead blocker to the second level. Eighth play of this drive as Anderson fakes, slings it down the sideline incomplete inside the 10-yard line. As J.C. Horn, the true freshman, was there, only the sixth true freshman that has started for South Carolina in the last 10 seasons. Where did Coach Robinson light up when we started talking about J.C. Horn? We talk about a talent that they have in him, and it's not just his physical skill set, it's his mentality. He said even the other guys on the team, they said, we've got one in this true freshman. He wants to compete. He wanted to make sure in drills he was going up against the best that the Gamecocks had at wide receiver, and that's pretty good when you look at Edwards and Samuel and the Smith boys. Third and seven, and a whistle. And another flag is going to come in here at the end of the play on Wanham after the whistle had occurred. And of course, Wanham's going to say, I didn't hear the whistle. I'm already bending the edge. And he was coming from Anderson's blind side. That was a nasty shot that Anderson took. But of course, Wanham is sitting there and he's telling his coaches, look, I couldn't hear the whistle. It's a late timeout. coming from the coastal sideline. DJ Wanham, six sacks a year ago, 13 tackles for loss. He was the guy. Before the snap, timeout, first charge timeout, Coastal Carolina. Dead ball, personal foul, number eight, South Carolina. 15-yard penalty, first down. Okay, we're, we'll take a timeout on the field with the Gamecocks up two touchdowns. All right, so it's right off of this edge. You're going to see there's going to be a, a timeout called from Coastal Sideline. Listen for the whistle. See Kilton Anderson, and he's just standing there. He hears the whistle, of course, and D.J. Wanham, he's rushing the passer. Now, you know, the difficulty is, is that he's in pass rush mode. The guy's sitting here thinking, I got clean, beat the tackle off the line of scrimmage. Playing in one of the best environments in college football. It is loud out there on the field. I'm sure Wanham claims he never heard it, but it gives the shots a fresh set of downs near the end of the first quarter at the 20-yard line. And Anderson keeps it himself inside the 15 to the field in Chris Budden. To Wanham's credit, I'm down here right by the South Carolina sidelines, and you're right by the student section. I didn't hear that whistle either. Yeah, it's just, you, know, you got to think, these guys, you get locked in pre-snap. You know, the only argument I guess you can make is when you see a quarterback standing flat-footed, maybe something's up, but it's a late timeout coming in. Either way, it gets the shot to clear as well inside the red zone. Tenth play of the drive, barely getting it off at the end of the first quarter as Outlaw gets near the 10 yard line. South Carolina looking great on offense at the start of the 2018 season as Will Muschamp wants to play with tempo this year and contend to win the SEC East. Off to a great start against the Shauna Clears. 
Shauna clears of Coastal Carolina did next to nothing on their first drive, but how about drive number two, gashing the Gamecocks down the field. They have a third and one at South Carolina's 11-yard line as we start the second quarter. And eight of those 10 plays have been on the ground. This one is two, straight ahead inside the 10-yard line. First and goal, Shauna clears from there is Marcus Outlaw, the transfer from Boston College, who had a good average there, over four yards per carry for BC in two seasons. He's turned into Coach Mowgli as bell cow so far. The fifth first down of this possession. And when Coastal first started on offense in this series, the desire for that possession was possess the ball now. Let's hang on to it. We've got to keep it for a little bit longer. Our defense is gassed. They're facing an offense that's marching up and down. They've done more than that. they got a score opportunity here. Anderson, no place to go, will lose yardage as he is collected by Steven Montauk and Bryson Allen Williams. Keir Thom Thomas in there as well. And that's what you need. Williams Thomas right up in the middle did a great job of penetrating quickly the guy that they flexed inside and outside get a negative yardage play and slow him down one thing that coach Muschamp told you Stench is that he's still a little concerned about depth on the defensive side of the football especially on the line when it comes to being game ready these guys are being challenged here second and goal from the 10 empty backfield for Anderson Takes off or tries to, but can't go any place. Sacked in the backfield. That's Javon Kinlaw. Montac in there as well. That time, defensive coordinator Travaris Robinson heated him up. See Montac, he's directing traffic. He wants to make sure, and you see the slot receiver that time. He's pointing out, I know he's coming. He's got inside leverage on me. This guy's coming off the edge. He's unaccounted for in the protection scheme. Back-to-back -back negative yardage plays by the Gamecock defense to back up the Shants offense after they march down into the red zone. 13th play, snap from the 15-yard line. They'll have to wait. Timeout. The offense is moving the football on you. What do you need? You need a couple of big plays by your defense. Can Coastal capitalize on a fantastic score opportunity? For ways can you watch it? There's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. You, you have to watch this. You have no excuse. You're surrounded. Yep. Huge third down here to convert this red zone possession. See if you can't come away with six. Careful. Down he goes back at the 22 yard line is around flying in there was Bryson Allen Williams. You better believe number four is a difference maker for this South Carolina defense. Boy, did they miss him. That time, though, coming from the second level, and you can see it's almost like a clothesline. See him coming in there, and Anderson, we were talking about earlier, he has taken some shots. He has been roughed up in this football game. And it's still very early. This is Charles Alverson, who is punting, and he's done also some, actually, excuse me, Massimo Biscardi is kicking. That is Alverson holding, and Biscardi's kick is through, and Coastal Carolina is on the board. So the freshman from Downington, Pennsylvania, gets Coastal Carolina on the scoreboard. Gamecocks have looked terrific on offense. They get it back. Party. Drive sober or get pulled over. All the legends in South Carolina history. Look at that duo. Heisman winner George Rogers in that frame. Debo Samuel. Jake Bentley already have their own picture. And today both of them have looked good on offense. Debo back healthy again waiting on this Coastal Carolina kickoff as he stands near the five-yard line. Let six touchdowns in 11 quarters last season before that broken leg that he had against Kentucky in the third week of the season. But what he did to NC State in Missouri. 
filthy. Just filthy. Miles Prosser kicks away from Debo, and it's fielded inside the five-yard line by A.J. Turner, and Turner's back past the 25-yard line. Debo came out in Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte last year and was terrific in the third game of the season against Kentucky. He took a catch to the house after a couple of kick returns that he went deep with in Como and in Charlotte. This guy has been all over the football field. The one problem has been staying healthy through his four years in Columbia. Just hadn't been able to complete a season. Otherwise, he's done everything else. Those took two kick returns last season, 194 yards. It's unreal. Bentley wants to go deep. And he overthrows Debo, barely, who had a step on the defender. For more on Debo, let's go to the field and KB. You guys talked about those injuries. I talked to him this week about it, and he said after his freshman and sophomore year when he was dealing with the hamstring injuries, he got to a really dark place, and he wanted to quit football completely. So I asked him what was the difference this year. He said he tried to stay positive. A lot was that was conversations with his mom, his dad, and Will Muschamp. He said the hardest part was getting back into football shape for this kind of speed of this offense. Rico Dowdle past the 35-yard line. It'll be third and short from there. I'll tell you another guy that's involved in this program directly now that can speak into a, a situation in overcoming injuries, especially a career play by injury, is Marcus Latimer. He's one of the better players that we've seen come out of this program in a long time. Underneath the Dowdle, who breaks tackles and stays on his feet for a game, Cox first down. Debo was slowed by injury, as was Rico Dowdle. The guy that was able to battle his way back, play in the bowl game, and in this game, we've seen already that the rushing attack, there is a focus. They're going to be intentional. You want to be physical in the ground game. Number five looks to be the leader of the pack in what could be a resurgent rushing attack for South Carolina. He's got 58 yards, and he steps over to the sideline, Tyson Williams second season here after playing for the other Carolina up in Chapel Hill takes it up to the 43 yard line so far up front for South Carolina they've done an excellent job of covering up the defenders if you're a ball carrier and you're approaching the line of scrimmage what you don't want to see is color you don't want to see another team's jersey before you get to the LOS and right now these ball carriers for South Carolina are clean into the line of scrimmage. The yards after that are up to you. Fake in the backfield, but some a mistiming there with Shai Smith as Bentley throws behind him. That was, that's one that Bentley's going to want back. And you saw him a season ago. One of the things that they like so much in their quarterback is that he thinks quickly. He can activate that football quicker. Those were to go with it. It's not just a mode that you stay in offensively that you want to be tempo. It's got to be a guy that can process quickly, something that Bentley can do that time just off target. Cox are three of three on third down. This one a third and six. Jake will run and get right near the sticks, but it looks like he's going to be a yard shot. Jeffrey Gunter was in hot pursuit. Coastal was content to play coverage that time. Bentley nowhere to go with the football to be able to convert. So the first time now, they're going to stay in on the, on the minus side of the football field. See if they can't convert a fourth. And it looks like they've done it. How about that stench? First game of the season, not even into Shauna Clear territory, and Will Muschamp all offseason said, I want to play with more risk, more confidence, more swagger. Well, there's an example of it. You look at it right there. You know, that's on the heels of a 15-play drive. Your defense was out on the field a good while in minus territory. You give the ball back. That's another easy, perhaps, scoring opportunity for your opponent. Instead, the offense converts and does a good job of picking up on the QB sleep. Rico cuts back 
inside the 40 to the 42 for eight more. Uh, you know, the only difficulty for the running backs on a lot of these carries is what hole do you want to hit? Look at this gap. You know, the entire logo on the 50-yard line was uncovered defensively. You know, Dowell does a good job, sticks his foot in the ground and gets upfield quickly. Hernia surgery two years ago, had that broken leg last year. 100% right now, first and 10 Gamecocks inside the 40. Right now, when we talked to, to Muschamp yesterday. So what are you looking for out of this offense? There's a lot of things, a lot of different places you can go. You think maybe Debo Samuel's the first guy. I want to see him, let's see him touch the ball. He said, no, I'm really excited about this run. We got to be better running the football. I'm excited to see what that looks like. Loves his offensive front, likes what he has at running back. Now let's see it out on the run. Nice couple of carries here in this sequence for the Gamecock offense. Tenth play of the drive, Tyson Williams stands to Bentley's right. He'll throw. One on one. Incomplete. No flag comes in yet, or Trey Smith was battling for it. Second down. Now that's the element of the offense that we haven't seen yet. It's the downfield passing. One of the things that they talked about with this shift, we're going to take shots downfield. Yeah, that's a good no call. It's physical at the ball. Both players had an opportunity to make a play on it. Falls incomplete. Mallory Claiborne, that defensive back, with a nice play there as Williams around the left side stays in bounds until he reaches the 32-yard line. It'll be third and short from there. Silas Kelly pushes him out for the shots. Taylor, that's but that's the piece of it that was one of the new elements. They want to be more aggressive with the downfield pass. They feel like Bentley's default setting is, I want to be aggressive downfield. That's one thing we haven't seen yet in what has otherwise been a very proficient and balanced attack offensively. Middle of the field is open and inside the 30 yard line. It'll be third and short. As Josh Van, the freshman from Tucker, Georgia, made that catch. He's definitely short of the line to gain. And if you're Van right there, obviously you want to lead him, and it was a nice throw by Bentley. Try to get upfield right now to pick up the yards over a yard into the fullback in front and inside the 25 Rico Dowdle lining up in that position gets the first down quick hitter right now get downfield Casey Crosby folding in there from tight end he ends up being a lead blocker for a fullback great quick conversion there now two fourth down conversions one on the minus side of the field now another for the Gamecock offense. Rico can do it all back there. You see why they're excited about it. That was a nice power run. Bentley, end zone. Edwards, touchdown. This guy was the star last season after Debo Samuel went down. They say one on one with him isn't a 50 50 ball. It's 70 30. Yeah, you like your odds then, don't you? Why don't you throw it towards number 89 and make him, uh, let him make you look good? And he can do that. Parker White's extra point is good. Coastal Carolina had a 15 play drive and had to settle for three. Gamecocks come back with a 14 play drive for seven. They're up 21 to three. I got Jake Bentley is feeling it right now. 10 of 14 passing and he just found his friend Brian Edwards. He's hanging out in the shade. It's a first down play right here. And you see a big heavy run formation. So you see a couple of tight ends. Here's Brian Edwards in the slot in the middle of the field is open. So you're just gonna have what ends up being a play action pass. Freeze the safety just for a moment. You got a mismatch. Linebacker trying to carry one of your best receivers. 
all the way downfield. Jake Bentley knew what he had pre-snap and knew he was going to come to his leading receiver from a season ago for a touchdown. And now he gets to hang out in one of those little porches they got down there on the sideline. <laughs> it's always nice. Notice they don't have one on the other side. Feels like well over 190 at kickoff. John Clears will get it at the 25. And now let's go back to the studio for an update on Ole Miss with DirecTV. More for your college football thing, PB. All right, Taylor, we know Ole Miss for passing the ball, but on fourth and one, they give the rock to Scotty Phillips, what a lot of people consider the top JUCO commit in the country. He goes 39 yards to the house, 24-10 Ole Miss. McLean Carter injured for Tech. Now the Red Raiders have a freshman quarterback in Allen Burrow. How about those Rebels running the football? Hadn't yeah. seen that in a while. I mean, listen, if they could start doing that, they kind of like their offensive front to complement the receiving core of Jordan Tamu. That is a scary offense. Colton Anderson and the Sean Clears get a flag thrown immediately as he throws the sideline to Malcolm Williams. It looks like Fenton Island might get whistled here. Pass interference, number 16 defense. The penalty is a first down at the spot of the foul. See Fenton there singled up on the edge. Physical through this route. I don't know. Now look, you got both of them fighting their way through that route. And guess what they're saying is right there at the end, Fenton pushed off. You can tell that Fenton's not overly concerned about it. Quick hit and throw. Ended up being a back shoulder. I don't know if that call we're going to see throughout this season. It looked like it was pretty physical throughout on both sides. Underneath throw out of the backfield goes to Kion Tyler near the 40 yard line. Monday at 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Thinking Out Loud is back for another season with Greg McElroy and Marcus Spears. They'll talk football and want your participation via social media throughout the show. It's also available streaming live on the ESPN app. After 15 hours a week with me, that what McElroy needs is another talk show. Absolutely. No yeah. doubt. I, I can see you tuning in and listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are great. And look forward to hearing them, watching them on Monday. Second and four. Outlaw. He's got a first down and Matt the Shauna Clears have run the football effectively as a couple of flags come in at the end of the play. Yeah, a little extracurricular there at the end. Shanta Clear center Trey Carter tangled up. Was fishing, finishing the play, blocking through the whistle, and it looked like it was Sherrod Green took exception to it. See Coach Muschamp not pleased. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 44 defense. Penalties 15 yards from the end of the play. Automatic first down. That was number 44's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. So watch at the end of the play. You see right there in the middle of your screen, and Green doesn't like it. Straight Carter, a little chin music. Of Carter's like, I'll take it. It's a free 15, and we saw that on the last possession for Coastal Carolina, where they were able to pick up some penalty yardage. Now two penalties on this drive already versus the Carolina defense. That's the last thing Will Muschamp wants to see when he's trying to find who the leader of this defense will be after Sky Moore's terrific five years, four on the field as their leading tackler. Outlaw. Just barely past the 40. You want your leader? How about number six? TJ Brunson, the first guy that Muschamp recruited when he got the job here at South Carolina, leading tackler from a season ago, at least returning for this year. And Brunson's the guy that Travaris Robinson said, I'm going to make him a leader. Doesn't come naturally to him. I'm going to make sure everybody understands this guy's voice is the same as my voice. You make plays like that. You get the attention of your teammates. Well, there's no doubt he was the best defensive player in August through the scrimmages and in practice. Second and eight for the shots near the four minute mark of the first half. Blake Lock barely gets it off. 
And this is Torrance Marable for his first carry. He was first team all Big South at Presbyterian College last year, transferring over from one of my favorite nicknames to another, the Blue Hose to the Shauna Clears. Absolutely. You know, one of them, I think the Shauna Clears, isn't it a, a well-dressed, oh no, it's cunning and witty. It is. Okay. It, it, if it were wearing attires, no question it uh, would understood. be well-dressed. No, yeah, the Blue Hose, I think we complement it nicely. You know, the commitment to the ground game by the Shots offense is pretty remarkable. Only four passes. 18 rushes so far. The throw here, and it's batted down at the line of scrimmage, fourth down. And that's the difficulty, right? And we've seen this all game long. Even when Coastal got into the red zone earlier, those negative yardage plays started piling up. And once again, number four, Bryson Allen Williams, able to get in there, get a hand in the quarterback's face, and disrupt the rhythm of that throw. We just haven't seen the ball in the air much for the Chanticleers. They've been aided by some penalties. They were only able to capitalize for points earlier on the previous possession. This time, they'll turn the ball over. Overson's second punt. With Brian Edwards standing at his 10-yard line. And it appears, at least at first, that Coastal Carolina is pinned South Carolina down at the two-yard line. We'll see if that is the way that it stays through the replay process. We will have uh, a football at the 20-yard line as the Gamecocks will get it there. It was close. As Jaquez Hairston here, Stinch, made a terrific play, but it looks like the ball had already crossed the plane of the goal. Yeah, the ball is still live here. But it's going to result in a touchback. It's a great hustle play. And what would have otherwise been a really lousy field position for South Carolina to take possession here. Jake Bentley's been terrific. 10 of 14, 102 yards, two touchdowns. He has already found seven different receivers here in the first half. Junior. Played at some of his high school football in Opelika, but born and raised in the Palmetto State. 20 years old, as he flips ahead here to Debo, and he's ahead near the 25-yard line. Bentley now with 29 touchdown passes. Of course, his dad is the running backs coach. His brother was the quarterback at Rutgers. Is now a GA here. Has another brother, Schuler, a quarterback at, at Murray State. Dad won all those state titles just up the road in Duncan, South Carolina at Burns High School. Just exudes leadership. And he almost got picked off there as that was deflected by Silas Kelly. What was interesting about Bentley is he grew up and said that his hero when he was a kid was a guy by the name of Willie Korn. And Willie, of course, the fi former five-star high school prospect who played at Clemson for Tommy Bowden and Dabo Sweeney, then transferred to North Greenville University. Now the wide receiver coach for the Shauna Clears talking to his former high school coach there, Bobby Bentley. That's a great moment right there. You see a coach visiting with a player, obviously a really accomplished player for him, now doing what his coach does. Oh, oh, Bentley takes a huge hit there. He did not see Kelly coming. Kelly makes two great plays in a row, forcing a three and out. See Kelly, he was lined up right in the middle of the formation. And Bentley gets grilled. You can see he's looking to unload. He never saw Kelly coming though. He was looking to throw this football. The inside linebacker coming on an A-gap blitz right in the middle of your protection. And Bentley had no idea that it was coming. One of the best punters in football is Joseph Charlton, the junior from here in Columbia. Needs a good one here. His hang time is just outrageous, and it is again as a fair catch will be made inside the 40 at the 39-yard line. Coming up at halftime, you can watch the live performance of the mighty sound of the Southeast. Carolina Marching Band on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming now on the ESPN app. You're a little concerned about them wearing 
that get up in this heat. Yeah, I mean, just you always look at those band members. It's like their their uniforms are made out of worsted wool or something, like some big, heavy garments. Like they're about to load a musket or something. Reenact the battle. Yeah, like a Revolutionary War combatant. Get him some, get him some fluids or something. We're gonna have the Susicone player going down. This is gonna be such fun this season. That's Outlaw past the 40-yard line. Under two minutes to go. Interested to see how Coastal calls plays here, trying to tack on a few points before the half as Keir Thomas makes the tackle. They've had, they've had no success passing this football. And in fact, all they've done is gotten their quarterback hammered and or wrist a pick going the other way. You know, the only success they've had is keeping it on the ground. Of course, the challenge being the clock is not your friend as this half winds down. Anderson keeps it himself and waiting for him is DJ Wanham. Now, Wanham's a guy, he's going to spend a ton of time in backfields. He did it a season ago at 13 TFLs. He's stepping it up already in this game as well, bending that edge backwards and backing up offenses. And why not call timeout if you're Will Muschamp with 1.14 left on this third down coming up? See if you can't get the ball back, get a little bit of time in, squeeze another scoring opportunity for your offense. But in the meantime, from the other perspective, from Coastal's perspective, their quarterback getting popped around. Kilton Anderson they're on the sideline they're trying to get his head on straight obviously they don't want to give the ball back to South Carolina with time yet on the clock risk another points going up on the wrong side of the board 114 to go in the second quarter with the Gamecocks looking for their first win of the season after a nine and four season in 2017 that included that Big Outback Bowl victory over Michigan. Dogs are coming to town next Saturday afternoon. Quick pass to Williams, and he's bottled up at the 40-yard line, fourth down. Amcox will call another timeout. They have won left and now let's look at mayhem moment brought to you by Allstate Kilton Anderson has been crushed in the first half today yeah we've seen many times obviously a penalty on that shot they'd already called timeout edge pressure able to get to Kilton Anderson again and again and we've mentioned a lot of running plays that have involved the quarterback they've run a couple of option concepts where the ball's coming Anderson, out of Anderson's hands. But in those option plays, if the quarterback does his job right, that defender is going to grill that quarterback even as he pitches it. Anderson, I don't know. I don't, they must have, like, one of those tide pins or something for his jersey because it should be green. He has been hammered here in the first half. Smart kid, 3.5 GPA, graduated in the spring with a degree in interdisciplinary studies. At a 4.0 through the college football season last fall. Started his career at Fresno State, then went to New Mexico Military Institute, finishing up with the shots. Overson with his third punt. It's a short one. And a fair catch made by Edwards inside the 25 next Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 Central. The SEC Nation traveling pregame show is right here for number three, Georgia, and the Gamecocks with Laura, Marcus, Ball, Tim, and Lauren as they break down everything from the gridiron to the grill for week two of the college football season. SEC Nation presented by Pilot Flying J right here on the SEC Network, also streaming live on the ESPN app. You played in here in that game, Stench, and you have certainly seen it in person. That's about as good as it gets in the SEC. Yeah, it's going to be smoking, man. It is going to be an unbelievable atmosphere, especially when you look at that East Division race and the hopes that South Carolina have. And a lot of it hinges on that second that second week of the season. Ryan McClendon decided to do it here with just under a minute to go and one time out. He immediately has Bentley throw it to Shai Smith for a first down to move the chains. 
get Shai Smith involved. You pick up the first, and this plays right into their mentality to be able to march down the field with a timeout to play with. And look how quickly they go underneath. That's completed to Edwards, and Edwards gets past the 45-yard line to the 49. That ball looked like it came out. And Enrico Dalla with the recovery. Otherwise, Edwards is tackled probably short of that first down. Ball comes out. Dowdle with the heads-up play downfield. 37 seconds left. Underneath. Straddling the sideline is KC Crosby, the tight end. And that's another first down for 14 yards. A senior from Bamberg, South Carolina, who broke his leg against Arkansas last year, but was terrific as a tight end a couple of years ago before the Hayden Hurst era began. It's Crosby on the recovery. I was incorrect before. Back to back, nice plays. It's a nice stiff arm, too, by Crosby after the catch. 30 seconds left as they approach field goal territory. Bentley, near side to Debo, stiff arm, out of bounds, inside the 22. How's that for a physical finish out of your playmaker in Debo Samuel? Secure the catch, deek inside, and then you're just trying to throw defenders down on the ground. He was looking for the choke slam after that catch. Now you're in red zone fringe with 22 seconds. It's still the timeout to work with. The middle of the field is in play. The bubble to Dowdle. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Five plays, 76 yards in 45 seconds, and didn't even use the timeout. This new offense is rolling. Extra point is good. Bentley five for five for 68 yards and throws his 30th career touchdown here. So you just suck him in. Slow screen right in the middle. Here's Dowdle. He's just going to release and get lost in all the traffic. And he's got an escort downfield that allows him to get into the end zone. Great job by the offensive lineman baiting the defensive front upfield. You know, you got those guys thinking, I want to rush the passer. You're in a one-minute drill mentality. You hit him with the screen, and Dowdle's able to capitalize on it. 97 all-purpose yards for Dowdle out of the backfield and two touchdowns in his first half. I mean, we talk about Samuel coming back and being an all-purpose contributor. Dowdle has great hands out of the backfield. He plays well in protection. He's an every down back. We've seen him on a short yardage, able to convert, lined up at fullback, showing that versatility and the role that he can play in this offense. And you could see the comfort zone that they were in. Marched right down the football field. Urgency, sure, no sense of panic. And you end up sitting on that timeout, leaving it in your pocket. We told you about that touchdown pass being his 30th just a second ago. I mean, consider the fact that this is his 20th game, and he's already ninth in South Carolina history in touchdown passes. Uh, if, and if the mentality is to bend the routes downfield, bigger passes, more aggressive, there's more plays, they continue to stack up sequence. Possession plays one series after the next you have to think that the touchdown passes are gonna follow Offense last year as we've mentioned several times it struggled 108th in the country in total offense at only five plays over 40 yards That's worst in college football and they only scored touchdown stints 22% of the time in the red zone You put all that together and you're thinking uh, he probably went four and eight, right? They went nine and four right. because they didn't commit penalties and they created turnovers, right? Yeah, and this, now you need that offense to blend in with that. No question. You know, they talk about all these coaches say complimentary football. You can't just win with one base. Although South Carolina did a pretty Game. good job of it. Offense, five yard penalty, still first down. And so that was the reason for the change this year to promote Coach McClendon, who had his shot 
against Michigan in the Outback Bowl. Performed beautifully in the second half. Got the job permanently. Bring in Dan Werner, who has all that experience at Alabama, Ole Miss, and Miami to help him. Working well so far in the first half against the Shots, who had another delay of game penalty here with 14 seconds left in the half. And just a kneel down for Anderson, and he'll take it to the locker room. Well, other than the one drive, 15 plays by the Shants offensively, you could point to a pretty clean half of football, especially on the offense, offensive side for South Carolina, a couple of fourth down conversions on one scoring drive, a very well executed one minute drill. The quarterback got popped one time. They're not going to like that very much from the South Carolina's perspective and Coastal, what they're saying is, look, we're going to have to regroup once again. They had one good scoring drive. Somehow or other, we got to help our defense and not only possess the football, but come away with points like they were able to do on just one of their offensive possessions. Cox 28 to three on top of the Shauna clears as we head to the half. But first, we head to the field with Chris Button. Coach, you've been working on that up-tempo offense. What did you like about that execution on the scoring drive? Well, we scored on every possession except for one. We had a busted protection on third down. We had a guy open, but uh, I thought we were pretty efficient offensively. We got to eliminate some of the silly penalties, especially on defense, have been hurting us. Two quarters left to play. What more would you like to see? A lot more points. Copy. Thank you. <laughs> South Carolina 28, Coastal Carolina 3. Let's go to the SEC halftime report with PB Chiz. Deshaun clears 28 to 3. He's Matt Stenchcomb. I'm Taylor Sarser. Chris Budden, she's down there. You'll see her in just a minute. How about that Gamecock offense, new look offense in the first half? Nice and balanced, executed well, had to overcome some adversity at times with a back to back fourth down conversions. They had to be pleased with the way they opened this game up. Let's take a look at playing with style brought to you by Belk. It all starts with the quarterback, Jake Bentley, finding all sorts of different receivers all over the field. And having to improvise at times. Buy time in the pocket. See if you can't deliver the football downfield. The touchdown throw to Brian Edwards was the longest pass completion in the entire first half. And then a screen pass to end and kind of punctuate that first half right before we entered into the uh, intermission period. Very impressive so far. Very balanced is this Gamecock offense. Now nine different friends out there. Making friends. And you know what? The best way to make friends as a quarterback? Give the ball. We've made friends with Chris Budden. She has a report for us. Hey, KB. Well, Joe Mowgli had told his team at half eight, you guys are playing what I consider one of the best teams in the country, so give it everything you got. Don't look at the score. He did say he was pleased with his offense and his special teams. He said on defense, I'd like us to do a better job of recognizing the guys coming out of the backfield. But on the other side, South Carolina's defensive coordinator, Travaris Robinson, before they ran into the uh, locker room for timeout. He told his team, hey, even despite only giving up three points, we haven't gotten one turnover. I want the ball this half. Well, he immediately gives it to Torrance Marable, who only had one carry in the first half and gets a first down on the first carry of the second half. Yeah, Marable was a little bit quiet, something we were talking about, anticipating him getting more touches there in the first half. And, you know, Joe Mowgli has a great message to his team to make sure that these guys keep their eyes off of the scoreboard and on the field of play. Try to capitalize on your opportunities in the second half. 11 yards there for the sophomore. Now he goes to the middle of the field and gets a few. The second down from there. Gamecock defense playing without its unquestioned leader, Sky Moore, who graduated last year, allowed 69 yards in the first half. Fewest in six years. Pretty impressive, to say the least. And you know, Coach Muschamp hit on it a little bit. Some disappointing penalty scenarios that extended drives that were fueling some of those possessions for Coastal. Obviously, you want to clean that up, but otherwise, there's been nothing by way of a passing offense for Coastal so far. And most of the runs, they've ultimately been able to shut down with negative yardage plays. Anderson keeps himself around the right end, takes a big lick out of bounds, and takes a coach with him. T.J. Brunson was the one that delivered it after the first down carry. We talked about the first half. Anderson taking shots. See Brunson there. 
right as Anderson trying to get to the yardage needed to convert the first down, was able to do so, but takes yet another blow. You know, halftime couldn't have come at a better time for the quarterback of the Santa Clears just to make sure that he had his head on straight to come out here for the final two quarters because he had been taking a beating. Again keeps it himself and gets lassoed to the ground by Kenlaw. That's a big man. Yeah, Javon Kenlaw, six and a half feet tall, 305 pounds. Does a great job of using those arms. Great long levers able to get offensive linemen off of his body. He tracks down the line of scrimmage well. Moves pretty well, but you don't have to that much when you can reach out with those arms. Got to be, what, 40 inches long. It's a lot better than he did this time last year. It was 345 down to 305 now. Anderson wants to throw. Right side wide open is Malcolm Williams. Working against Keyshawn Nixon, the fastest defenders. He just gets turned around in coverage. Great job, outward breaking route. And Malcolm Williams, as we mentioned, probably the best playmaker for the Chanticleer offense. Can't get enough touches here in the second half to try to put up some yards. And a nice opening drive here in the second half for Coastal. This is the first one that Coach Robinson mentioned when he turned on the film. He said, watch number nine for the shots. Watch number seven as he comes into the picture is J.C. Horn, the true freshman, immediately making an impact in his first game. So we saw Steven Montak able to get pressure in the first half from a safety position. This time, it's J.C. Horn coming off of the edge, lined up right off the line of scrimmage. You talk about a mismatch, because you're talking about a guy with exceptional speed. Any of these guys that can play physical in the box and provide a pass rush presence, you're able to manufacture pressure that way. Nice play by the true freshman. Freshman from Alpharetta, Georgia. Far from where you are, Stinch. Underneath throw as Kion Tyler makes the catch. He's up to the 40-yard line now. J.C. Horn's father is Joe Horn. A great wide receiver, of course, who played most of his career with the New Orleans Saints. And Coach Muschamp said that Joe has been around the team, came to scrimmage a couple of weeks ago. Terrific 12-year career in the NFL. Made several Pro Bowls. Brought a phone out of his shoe once. That's right, the old phone and the shoe trick. Yes. Exactly right, shoe phone. Circus An injured player on the field. Back to Columbia in just a moment. Well, you don't want to see this. Big DJ Wanham, one of the three sophomores in school history that was the permanent team captain last year, now is a junior, having trouble putting any pressure as he walks off the field. It happened so fast. He's trying to jump over the attempted cut block. You see these offensive linemen on a quick pass, a quick swing pass. You're trying to get the defensive ends hands down. And when Wanham went to jump, he rolled his ankle inside. That could be a big loss for the Gamecock defense. Third and 16 underneath pass is complete inside the 35-yard line uh, to Malcolm Williams. It's fourth down. That time defended by Jemias Williams, a guy from a season ago. He's a pretty big playmaker for South Carolina. As a freshman, came in undersized guy. And he was a little bit banged up, didn't participate in spring. And uh, he's going to play. Coach has talked about that after having a pretty good freshman campaign. But they have recruited well at that position. They have other playmakers as well. Now, this is Massimo Biscardi from 50 yards. Here's the flag. Looks like Keir Thomas in the interior of South Carolina's line. It's coming across, but. Offside, defense, five yard penalty, still fourth down. So make it a 45 yard attempt. <laughs> See Keir Thomas right there. 
Just couldn't quite hold his water, trying to get a good get off because on those long field goal attempts, the trajectory of the ball is usually a good bit lower. Thomas was on the side of the ball where you got a chance, you get your hands up, you might mess around and block a kick. Trying to get good push and ends up giving Coastal five extra yards on this attempt. Biscardi from 45 yards right down the heart. Shauna clears with another field goal trail, 28 to six, making the drive over here to Columbia. The superheroes. Right. And if I'm an elephant, am I punching with my with my foot? Why, why do you not use your trunk? Right. Right on the cardinal. Seems like that's the most dangerous element to the elephant. But from a one-two combo, you go with the trunk first. Miles Prosser who kick it deep to Debo Samuel. I did want to see the shot of clear. I did too. So badly. Debo runs up to the 10. Still on his feet. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This guy is so electric. He's tackled at the 36-yard line. Get the, uh, get the, Coach Buschamp says they don't have those catapult systems and track their activity. If they did, he probably would have shut him down from the sideline. They'll be running around out there too long. He was about to run another 40 yards to try to get loose again. You can just see how exciting it is. And Debo Samuel has the ball in his hands. Well, and keep in mind, Stench, that you can fair catch a football anywhere inside the 25 and get it at the 25. If they kick it to Debo this year, they're not doing that. Rico Dowdle just barely past the 35-yard line. He had a great first half. Look at that. Seven of his ten touches first down. Get that man the ball. Gets in the end zone, too. Off of a screen pass. They haven't had a 100-yard rusher since 2013. It was Mike Davis. And Rico Dowdle is knocking on the door. It won't take long at, at this rate. Bentley in stride finds Shai Smith, and Smith is in the Coastal Carolina territory. 20 more yards. Bentley did a great job of fielding this snap. Donnell Stanley, a couple of these snaps looks like he's snapping a medicine ball back there, like it's got a weight in it, just drops low. Rico straight up the gut. Gets to the 35 yard line near another first as Brayton Matz makes the tackle. You know, back to Shai Smith for a second. Bentley said that he made him go wow several times in August. He had a, a big freshman season after Debo went down. Let's just think about how challenging that is when you consider what Bentley's seeing in practice every day. You've got the Brian Edwards out wide, the talents like a Debo Samuel. To know that you've got a Shai Smith or Trey Smith, another big target, for you to stop and say, wow, what that guy just did, that's saying something. It's one thing if you just got one of those types of guys. The receiving core is impressive here for South Carolina. It's Dowdle. Near the 27-yard line, this Coastal Carolina defense has been pushed around by that massive off offensive line that the Gamecocks have this season. Quickly on a second and short, and Dowdle about a yard shy of the first down. They've given up about 40, 40 pounds a man across the front. And just the size of this Gamecock offensive line tackle to tackle. They're doing a good job getting excellent push, but also capturing the edge. Looks like the Shauna clears are off sides. Could be a free play. Bentley one-on-one -on -one to Debo Samuel, and here comes the flag. It's Mallory Claiborne that could be whistled for it. You can see Bentley wants that throw back. Felt like he could have put some more air under the football. There are two fouls on the play. Offside, number nine, defense. That penalty's declined. Pass interference, number seven, defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. Trying to get the ball to Debo Samuel downfield. You see, yeah, just holding. 
Gets his head around, but way too much contact. Samuel couldn't work his way back to the football. But the veteran presence to know that, look, we get him to jump a little bit. It's not only a free play, but I got a first down either way. I can take my shot and know I got a fresh set of downs. That's the game within the game that these quarterbacks are able to play, especially the ones with experience. See the trips to the top. Bentley escapes inside the 10, tackled at the 9 by Anthony Chesley. And wisely gets down. You know, Bentley can run. He's not a runner. And by that, I mean he's not a guy that you're going to be running a lot of zone read concepts, a lot of quarterback pulls. He can catch a defense sleeping. He had a couple of nice runs last year. The Vanderbilt game kind of stands out, able to get in the end zone on a scamper. But he needs to be smart. He's bought time. That time was able to get down to stay clean. Tyson Williams following Keel Pollard into the end zone. Pollard at his own touchdown catch earlier in the game. This time he sets up a great block for Williams and six more. The coaches were excited about Pollard. And right there, he's just looking for work. He just got out there looking for somebody else. Looked as if the second level defender sunk inside. Pollard just did a good job of kind of search, destroy, find somebody to do something with. Tyson Williams walks into the end zone. Parker White. Perfect with extra points today, and Jake Bentley in his new look offense is humming. Welcome back to Williams Bryce Stadium, where Sandstorm has become an anthem here. So, how did this all start? Well, back in 2009, when South Carolina was playing an undefeated and top ranked Ole Miss team on a crucial fourth down, they played this song. It was so loud in here that they forced Ole Miss to have to take a delay of game penalty. So then they played it the next game when a big moment came and it kind of just rolled on from there. Now before every kickoff, you hear Sandstorm, they started doing it in baseball games and basketball games. And I think this might have been the 15th time already today, guys. <laughs> you should see Zarzer up here. Toe tapping? You look like you're at a rave. Would you like a glow stick? I do, I do get fired up for Sandstorm. It's one of my favorite That's traditions in the uh, SEC. And it reminds me of the SEC Network launch. I know that wasn't Gamecock's favorite moment that night against the Aggies, but when they came on, Brent Musburger's going crazy, Sandstorm's going nuts. It was a pretty cool way to, to launch the network. And next Saturday, SEC Nation will be here, and then the dogs are coming in, and this yeah. place is going to be going crazy at 3.30 have, Eastern. They'll have it amped up. That's a long song. My wife plays that in the, the spin classes and stuff. <laughs> it's a great spin song. Sand, it's ruined Sandstorm for you. Get actually broken off. Hilton Anderson and the Shauna Clears did kick a field goal last time. He it himself, and he is going to be worn out tonight. It's six. It's Eldridge Thompson makes the tackle. We were talking about the Shauna Clears earlier and about their connection to South Carolina. The school started in 1960 and was part of the South Carolina system. They were the coastal campus for the University of South Carolina until 1993 when they branched off and became their own independent school. Played FCS football until last year. Joe Mobley it took them to the playoffs four times, and now they're at the FBS level in the Sun Belt. And it's going to take a few years, stench for them to get to the top and compete with the Troys and the Appalachian States. No question. And Joe Mobley knows that. You know, it's if you could expand his comments that he made about this game specifically onto the macro level, just keep doing what we're doing. You know, we got to keep grinding forward. Part of it's just the natural maturation that has to happen on an incredibly young roster that eventually you're going to reap the rewards of all this playing time that you have to play some of these guys early. Arkansas State also expected to be really good this year. They're at Alabama next week. Underneath throw to Williams, short of the first down. 
it'll be fourth down there. Nick Harvey coming up from his safety spot. Laying the wood just underneath the yardage needed. Kilton Anderson on that carry a couple of plays ago was pretty slow to get up. I think that as this game wears on, it's really starting to take the toll. We saw Bryce Carpenter for what one snap in the first half. They want to get him some reps. We might see that sooner rather than later. Harvey, by the way, a transfer from Texas A&M. Added to the defensive back depth for Coach Muschamp. Alverson kicks it to Edwards, who calls for a fair catch near the 23-yard line. Coming up at four, it's week one of the college football season, continuing with the Chad Morris debut against Eastern Illinois. Then it's the Dan Mullen debut in Gainesville at 7.30 against the same team he faced to start last season at Mississippi State. And that's our Saturday night matchup. SEC Network alternate channel has UT Martin against Mizzou. And the Blue Raiders, watch out for the Stockstills. They're playing the doors in Nashville. To find the SEC Network alternate channel in your area, go to secnetwork.com slash channel. And all four games are also streaming live on the ESPN app. Rick, the head coach, Brent, the sixth-year quarterback, traveling over from Murfreesboro to play Derek Mason and Vandy tonight. Underneath throw to Debo, and he gets near the 25-yard line. Big hit from Chesley. Pads popping. Get your decal smudged a little bit. New decals, incidentally. Look at these South Carolina helmets. They got that Carolina script versus the uh, the C logo there on the side. They'll have those on the other two helmets, the white and the black helmets they have this year. Add it down, and what a good play by Bentley yeah. to prevent a pick six as Chesley was right there. It's twice we've seen some of these quick hitting passes where an edge defender is able to get their hand on the ball. And that time, you're right, Taylor, that's smart by Bentley. Just get the ball down on the ground quickly. Make sure that this is an incompletion and not an interception going the other way. Chesley, the senior from Temple Hills, Maryland, all over the field in these last two plays. Nowhere to be found this time, although there's a flag down as Shai Smith has a first down catch of the 45-yard line. It's like another free play for South Carolina. You see offside number eight and 94 defense penalties decline the result of the play is a first down some frustrations at the end of that last play but what you can see sometimes especially after you played a couple of quarters offenses get into a rhythm and then you have an opportunity to change it up defenses get into that rhythm too that's twice now in this half where we've seen Bentley in the Gamecock offense use an altered cadence and getting free yards and free plays how about this, 25 pass, 25 rush plays today. The epitome of balance. And the 26th rush, Tyson Williams gets into Coastal Carolina territory fighting for extra yardage. Uh, look, that's how you're able to be balanced. When your offensive line buys your running back enough time to where he can hunt and peck his way up the field. Very quickly to Van. Freshman from Tucker, Georgia, with his second catch. And this is the new wrinkle stench this season to yeah. see South Carolina moving with this kind of pace. And what aids them in doing that is the efficiency on first down. You get that gateway yardage on first down, and then you can jump the ball. Williams first down, tripped up as Chesley prevented a big gainer there, but another first down. Brian McClendon, the offensive coordinator now, said we're a balanced ball club. Check. We line up quickly. Check. And we can play fast. Check. They've yeah. done all those things today. All of them. And you don't have to stand on the gas all the time. They say all gas, no brakes. But you can feather the throttle. We're seeing it. So Dowdle back in the game inside the 25. You know, the only thing, and I want to harp on it, but you're looking at an offense that's incredibly balanced. They're proficient in moving the football. These snaps are concerning. 
I've seen it. We've seen it over and over again. Bentley having to bend down and catch these snaps at his ankles. Otherwise, you're looking at a pretty clean set of quarters. Three quarters into this game, this offense is operating really, really effectively. Starters still in near the two-minute mark of the third quarter. And Dowdle running hard at the 20-yard line near another first down as Fitz Watley makes the tackle. Let's see how long it takes to get to the next play, although they are slowing down a bit here. Well, part of it's just being lined up to run the next play and not necessarily getting ready, although they did take their time more methodical now, and especially when you get in the red zone, you see this sometimes from offenses. Fake to Tyson Williams across the middle to Edwards, first and goal. And that looks pretty. Junior from Conway, South Carolina, came into the game with a 108 career catches. You put him with Shai Smith and Debo Samuel out here on the field. It's a dangerous offense. And not only how physically imposing they are at the line of scrimmage, how they finish these catches. Very physical with the ball in their hands. That was pretty quick. A strike to Debo, but through his hands. That time just a little too hot. You know, another gateway play. You get down there, you see Bentley thumping his chest a little bit. That's on me. Take a little bit off of that one. Right now, we've seen them incredibly effective this year in this part of the field. You know, we're three quarters into the season. Last year, this was an area of concern. You got to come away with points in the red zone. You want sixes, not threes. Which they've been perfect in doing so far today. Again, Samuel, did he make that catch? You're kidding me. Touchdown. All he needs is one hand. And you see his right arm being held down by Mallory Claiborne. Debo's like, look, all I need is my outside arm. Reaches up. How's this for a gloves catch? Gets that foot down, inbounds. The official's all over it. You see the head linesman? Perfect position. And another highlight reel play for number one. The White's extra point is true. As one of the best players in college football is back, and he is healthy. What a one-arm grab by Debo Samuel. Last year, only 22% of the time in the red zone, they scored six points. That's just hard. You can't have it. When you get into that area of the field, you battle your way down there, maybe it's via turnover, it doesn't matter. You're playing on a 20-yard football field. You've got to get into the end zone. It's two first downs. Find your way to get it over the goal line. You don't want to be kicking field goals, especially as big of an adventure as it was in field goal kicking last season for South Carolina. All the more reason you want to make sure you're kicking for point afters, not for field goals. This kick is going to be a touchdown back. Well, no turnovers yet today, but that defense is trained, Chris Button, to always find the football. It is. It's something that Travaris Robinson, the defensive coordinator, stresses in every meeting. He says, I know every D.C. across the country says they want the ball, but we want it more than anyone else. They talk about it first thing in the meeting, so much so that they have props. These are footballs attached to springs that they nail to the wall. They come in and they punch them on the way to their defensive meetings. It's an idea he stole from Dan Quinn when they were together at Florida. Dan Quinn now with the Atlanta Falcons, but there are footballs all over the place. Not don't have a turnover yet today as Kilton Anderson stays in the game. And that's a completion to Jeremiah Miller. No, but you can bet that defensive unit's talking about it. That was another thing the defensive coordinator Robinson was talking about as you see him there. Look, making the signals onto the field, but his players talk about it. They don't have to come up with some type of a gimmick. That's an actual practical tool that they use to try to hatchet the ball out there, uppercut, punch. They actually named the ways 
you can get the ball out. Anderson option to the left. This is Alex James, and he's got a first down, KB. Yeah, I've heard the defense talking about it when they come off the field. Hey, guys, we still haven't gotten a turnover, and that's something that Robinson has been very proud of, that he doesn't always have to mention it to his team. They take so much pride in, hey, why haven't we gotten a T.O. yet? Just two seconds left in the quarter. They're not going to get the ball off as we'll go to the fourth. End of the third and, quarter. And the Gamecocks are rolling 42 to 6 with this new look offense. Jake Bentley with four touchdown passes today. And Rico Dowdles, the first 100 yard rusher in a game in five years. All 2017 with those nine wins off those turnovers. Today, they haven't needed them because of this new look offense. Yeah, it's just so impressive a season ago. 86 points that they were able to generate off of turnovers, and they needed them desperately a season ago. And it's surprising because, oh, loose ball. Well, there could be a turnover on cue. The Gamecocks get their first of the football game as Alex James could not handle the football in Rosendo Lewis. The freshman from Deerfield Beach, Florida, pounces on it. There's Coach Robinson. He's jacked. He's going, why didn't y'all pop that graphic earlier? With the graphic up, we actually are able to pile up the stats on the pitch. Just doesn't look at all the way in. Alex James took his ball, hand, eyes off of the ball, doesn't secure the pitch. And on cue. South Carolina generates a turnover. Well, Chris Damiani and Dan McMahon in our truck can see the future. I didn't really. I'm glad you came up with that. Michael Skarnecchia is in at quarterback. A fifth year senior from Fleming Island, Florida. Only one for one for nine yards in his career passing. Has been a terrific backup to Jake Bentley the last couple of years. So supportive. Hands to Tyson Williams there. Garnecchia has played in three career games, recipient of the Dr. Harris Bastidi's Outstanding Student Athlete for 2017. The guy that we talked about in our meetings the other day, and Coach Muschamp said, look, we got to get him some reps. We like what we have at quarterback in general. There's some depth, but we're going to see Skarnecchia because he is our number two. On with the ones scrimmaging in August as he throws. He's now two for two in his career as he finds Keel Pollard back to the studio and Peter Burns. You know, Taylor, Ole Miss coach Matt Luke says Scotty Phillips doesn't say a whole lot. Well, he says a lot with his legs. 65 yards, house call. Jones County Community College proud to have him over playing for Ole Miss right now. 37 to 20, Ole Miss up on the Red Raiders. Texas Tech actually was a slight favorite in that game in Houston today is Cliff Kingsbury and the Red Raiders try to have a better season in Lubbock but Matt Luke off to a good start there will Muschamp off to a great start here with just under 14 minutes to go now Michael Skarnecchia is two for two in his career passing for the Gamecocks unless you count this one when the head ball coach dropped it as the celebrity receiver, like Ryan McGee, the celebrity rep official there throwing the flag. Oh, yeah. HBC. And he, and he ran such a great route. It was, uh, it was a waste. It really was sad. You look at that, though. It is 10 years here. Rewrote some records for South Carolina. Got a division title, three straight, 11 win seasons. Is dominating Clemson. Oh, there's another drop. This is Ortray Smith this time. It's twice in this game where Jacob Bentley is going to say, you know what, I want that one back. I threw one behind. Uh, I'm sorry, Skarnecchia. So I will say once for Jake and once for Skarnecchia. And we put the hex on the poor guy because we just showed a bad ball in the spring <laughs> game from however many months ago. You see Bentley, he can relate on the sidelines. Had one that he wanted back as well quick timing throws and have to come out and lay out right in front of the receiver. This is a fourth down. And 
that one's deflected, and Coastal Carolina will get the ball back. We've seen that a handful of times today. Coastal's able to get their hands up, get their arms up in the passing lane. And that's a good way to affect the passer as well if you can't rush. Tonight, after Charleston Southern versus Florida, the SEC Now team will recap all the games with highlights, analysis, interviews, and everything else. No one covers the SEC like we do. You can also see it streaming live on the ESPN app. So Dari joins Coach Chiz and Chris tonight after the Gators in Charleston Southern. Anderson still going, tosses it to Malcolm Williams. What are your expectations for Dan Mullen this season? Uh, you know, a lot of folks have said, and, and I've heard this a couple of times, that you know, they think that Florida might be the second best team in the East Division. I have a hard time getting there, especially with question marks at quarterback. Uh, we know that they're going to go with Franks, it appears. Uh, and at the same time, I think that it's a, it's a somewhat of a rebuild job on that offensive side of the football. I think that for sure he can get it turned around. Last year was a lost season with the departure of Jim McElroy. Anderson throws a sharp ball to the sidelines to Williams for a first down for 11 yards. We have five coaching changes in the Southeastern Conference overall. Jimbo Fisher won his first game on Thursday night against Northwestern State. He's got Clemson coming to town next Saturday. Chad Morris makes his debut in just under an hour and a half as the head coach of the Razorbacks. Joe Moorhead's going to make his debut without a starting quarterback in Nick Fitzgerald versus Stephen F. Austin. Suspended for a team violation that happened a few months ago. So Keaton Thompson, who had such a great year last year, will fill in again. Another first down catch made as Anderson suddenly is using the entire football field. This time to Kion Ty Tyler. And that's a first down into South Carolina territory and then of course next week we'll see Jeremy Pruitt the head coach of Tennessee he's got West Virginia today in Charlotte have his hands full you're going to see one of the better quarterbacks in college football and what is thought to be highly touted talent in Will Greer and what can be a very explosive offense Dana Holgerson at West Virginia typically fields an offense that can pile up numbers this time by Marcus Outlaw. And Outlaw is near the 20 yard line. Coastal Carolina with three consecutive first downs. Watch the footwork by Anderson. Quick spin. He reverses out. And then it's just a downhill run. Looks like it's going to hit towards the perimeter and caught South Carolina in a crease. Same thing. It's the longest play of the game for Coastal Carolina that went for 20 yards. It's Outlaw's inside the 20. It went right, right back to it. You can see Coastal done this a couple of times in the game. They're trying to create space with this big defensive front of South Carolina by widening their offensive splits, trying to get movement pre-snap just by alignment. So you've got three and four yard splits between the guards and tackles on some of these run points. So Carolina's only thrown it 13 times today. Number 14, incomplete, the flag comes in as Nick Harvey didn't allow the receiver to make a play on the football. You mentioned earlier, Harvey, transfer, came in, made a nice play to deny the first down yardage on an earlier possession. This time, pass interference, number one defense. The penalty is a first down at the spot of the foul. These are the plays, yeah. yeah it's just easy. To, that's an easy call for the official. And these are the plays that Coach Muschamp are going to want to clean up. And then, you know, Kilton Anderson's still out there. At some point, you got to start thinking towards next week. I don't think we're going to see a comeback in this one. And if this keeps up, I don't know if we'll see the quarterback come back in next week's game versus UAB. Staley did get that big hit there. This is Carpenter in for the second time today. And he doesn't have much place to go as Shamik Blackshear wraps him up. 
Smart play. Ian Anderson out there. Fake the toss. See if you can get the linebackers to widen and then reverse back. And Blackshear wasn't having it. Got right upfield. Flagged early on a kickoff return for a little bit extracurricular activity. That time able to get into the backfield, make a nice play in the red zone. Gamecocks will call a defensive timeout, trying to keep the Carol Coastal Carolina Shauna Clears out of the end zone. Are you in good hands? They have moved a lot of dirt here in Columbia. That's the Cindy and Kenneth Long Family Football Operations Center. Under its $50 million projected bu budget, Will Muschamp, Bob McNair, the Texans owner, Darius Rucker, of course, an alum, also contributed to make this facility so special. 110,000 square feet, recruiting center, locker room, weight room, athletic training room. Also has a player's lounge. Even has, even has a recording studio I in there. I was about to say, brother, some places have slides. This place has a recording studio. To the end zone, that's a touchdown. That is High Lee, Javon High Lee with the touchdown grab for Coastal Carolina, their first touchdown of the season. And it was Bryce Carpenter who threw that football. Those two connected throughout their high school careers, too. Hey, look at games like this. Coastal comes in here, and this builds on what Joe Moglio was talking about. You just go out there and you keep playing. You know, we're, in his eyes, you're facing one of the best teams in the country. Let's keep this in perspective here. Nobody wants to roll over, and at the same time, you're gonna keep battling. You only get 12 games a season. You gotta take advantage of all four quarters. And Chanticleer is able to get into the end zone, and now trying to tack on a two-point conversion. They'll run the option this time, and it's near the goal line, Mark Short, as Malcolm Williams did not get in. Bryce Carpenter and Javon Hiley, both from Venice High School in Sarasota, Florida, connect at the collegiate level for the Shauna Clears first touchdown of the season. Exxon and Mobile, the ground game has been terrific for South Carolina, led by Rico Dowdle. Well, this was definitely what they wanted to see. I don't know that you could say this is what you expected to see. I mean, the holes were just enormous. These backs, they're like, you know, they're throwing moves, I think, just to stay in practice because there's nobody to really juke. There's these enormous holes at the line of scrimmage and beyond. Great job by the boys up front, tight ends as well, getting these running backs into the second level. First time in a season opener that South Carolina has gone over 100 yards in five years. This is A.J. Turner, one of the guys running the football for South Carolina today. He was wrestled out past the 30-yard line. We have a flag, so this was probably going to give South Carolina poor field position. During the return, holding number 35 return team, 10-yard penalty for the spot of foul, first down. You know, the first guy I think about when a Gamecock is running the football in the last couple of decades is Marcus Lattimore, and he is standing by with Chris Budden. Thanks so much, Marcus. Now, Director of Player Development. First off, what's it been like today to be back on the sideline standing with your old team? It's very different, uh, but you have more gratification. Uh, because you've seen how much they put into it. I've been here since January, so I've been through winter workouts. I've been through summer workouts. Uh, we just got done with the Beyonce concert. And seeing the stadium come alive from facilities to equipment to nutrition to all the work that the coaches put in, uh, you feel so much pride as an alumni. And uh, I'm just so grateful for the opportunity that Coach Muschamp gave me. As director of player development, how do you embrace your role? I live off of my experiences. You know, I'm able to empathize with so much that they go through on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, from a freshman handling his class load to a senior having anxiety about what's next. 
you know, I've been there and I've lived it and I'm able to give advice uh, from a different perspective. So I enjoy it for one, but, but number two, uh, it's a passion of mine. So I'm going to ask you some X's and O's since I have you here. What do you think of this new up-tempo offense? Oh, I love it. I love it. Uh, Coach McClendon, I mean, he's done such a great job implementing the new way we do things. Uh, and, and, you know, he's got some of my favorite plays in there. So selfishly, I just want to see him run it every time. Uh, but, this, but it's been amazing. And the guys have responded well to him. You know, you play hard. Uh, for a guy who's passionate as he is about what he does. You have been through so much. What has been the reaction from the players? What are things they ask you? Uh, I think they know that I've been through so much, and, and it's kind of easy for me to get my point across, whatever I'm trying to talk about. It, it, I can say 70% attendance at all the events that I've tried to do throughout the summer and, and throughout the spring, uh, so that makes me feel good as player development going into my first year. but. Uh, got a lot of work to do, you know, always room for improvement, and, uh, and I'm just looking forward to helping these guys off the field. Well, I appreciate the time. Go enjoy the rest of the game. Thank you so much. He's enjoying Tyson Williams, who's had two first down runs while you guys were talking, and Bailey Hart caught a 13-yard catch. So a couple of first downs give the Gamecocks the football in the Coastal Carolina territory. Uh, that man's character is just off the charts. So the gruesome injuries that he sustained, his attitude through it, the young man that he's become, and now the impact that he's having on these Gamecocks can't be understated. Really need to see Will Muschamp bring him into the program officially this season. Yeah, he's, Marcus Lattimore is one of my favorite players, maybe all time. Just, he's a tremendous football player. There's no question about that. And what he was able to overcome and still be a tremendous football player. And the fact that you could just remove and replace, substitute football player for guy, just, just a tremendous person. And now his impact is gonna be felt by just about every player in this program that's smart enough to spend time around him. DJ Turner on the last carry, and now Tyson Williams on this one. He runs around the left side and moves the chains again as we approach the seven minute mark. Lattimore spent some time coaching high school football after retiring from the game on the field due to those knee injuries. No question he can make a big impact still for many years to come. Skarnekia wants to go to the end zone. And it's caught. Skarnekia throws his first ever touchdown pass, and he finds Rendricus Davis for six. Davis does a great job of fighting through the defender to make this catch. Save your quarterback. Ball's underthrown. See if you can't find a way to at least play defense. And Randricus Davis does a great job of hauling in this catch for a touchdown. Needed to see if he completed the catch all the way through. What a job he did fighting with Anthony Chesley there. Sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia. Player game, offense, five yard penalty. Still playing a try. Here's one more look at the guy that had a great outback bowl with four catches. Great concentration. I don't think the ball ever touches the ground. A great job of pulling it into his chest, rolled over. I, I never saw him lose control of it. Andrikas Davis, a guy who's been hampered by injury throughout his time here in South Carolina. Sports hernia surgery. For White, seven for seven with extra points. Gamecocks lead is 49 to 12. Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 Central Thinking Out Loud is back for another season with Greg McElroy and Marcus Spears. They'll talk football and want your participation via social media throughout the show. It's also available streaming live on the ESPN app. A lot to talk about in this first week of the college football season. 
Are you a believer that Washington Auburn game could have college football playoff implications? Well, I think both of those teams uh, will be contending for college football playoff spots, and I'm not sure that the losers eliminated. Um, you, obviously, if you're Auburn, you've got opportunity to crawl right back into the race. Washington thought to be the premier team coming out of the Pac-12, a conference that was shut out of the playoff a season ago. So I, I know they can embellish on a, a schedule, but I don't think it's an elimination game. Then tonight, it, it's two up, and it's Jalen for Alabama against Louisville? Yeah, I'd be shocked if you just saw one and not the other. And part of that's a function of, I think the scoreboard will afford you the opportunity to play both, even if it wasn't strategic coming into the game. I think the circumstances after kickoff will allow for both of those guys to play. Will Tommy getting a little work on kickoffs, and that one goes into the end zone. Shauna Clears will get it at the 25-yard line. Debo Samuel injured in the third game of the season last year has come back and has had a nice day. Right out of the gate, you know, he got to touch it on kickoff. We were surprised at that, and then got the ball in his hands, caught a, caught a ball in the first series. They've given him the ball out of the offensive backfield. And you can just see an explosive guy, a guy you want to get to the ball, the ball to him any way you can, even if he only has one arm available for the catch. That's more than enough. Debo Samuel starting this season off hot. Nine targets, came down with seven of them, a touchdown. There's going to be more of that after this game. Late option toss to Jaquez Hairston by the quarterback Bryce Carpenter. 16 yards for the Shauna Clears. Carpenter could be the future for Coach Mowgli at the quarterback position. You know, when you look at last year, Anderson played six of those ball games, was able to start the final three. And I think, that, you know, if they're capable of keeping him cleaner throughout games, whether Carpenter outplays Anderson or not, he might have to come out here and take some snaps. John Clears host UAB next week near the beach in Conway. This is Hairston again past the 45-yard line. Carpenter, one of 67 freshmen on the team that we talked about earlier, including 39 true freshmen. So 67 total. By comparison, South Carolina has 44. Yeah, I, I mean, you're just, it, it's a remarkable number. That's a lot of young guys in your program. And it's a challenge. It's always a challenge to transition from high school to college regardless. But also, you layer on the competitive level that they're going to be asked to play it. It's going to be a challenge for this entire program until they get over. Ooh, Ooh. got the edge and then took a big hit from Harvey, and a flag comes in. You know, it didn't. It didn't seem like it was late, real time. And or if they're taking a look at it, flag comes out to see if it was a helmet-to-helmet -helmet shot for targeting. After the run was out of bounds, personal foul, late hit with targeting, number one defense. The play is under further review. Al Ford is today's replay official, and he'll take a look at this. Uh, you know, the targeting, I'm seeing it there. It's not late. If this was a clean shot, and he lowers quite literally the target of his tackle, then it's a clean play in my opinion. He's just out of bounds right there. He just barely stepped out of bounds. I wouldn't say that that was a late hit, but the targeting's legit. Uh, Forcible I'll, blow to the head or neck area. Yeah, crown of the helmet, it's crown got all of it. Of it. Yep. But it's two penalties, so were we to separate the two out, you know, the late hit out of bounds, if it were cleaner, if the target or the location of the tackle was different, I would have said, I don't know if I call late hit, but for sure, I think the targeting was a legitimate flag. As you see the description, it pretty much checks off the boxes. Especially the very last one that you just referenced. Yeah, he lowers his head. You know, it's, about, it's in the head or neck area of the player, but he, he struck with the crown of his helmet. It's, it's in a lot of ways, targeting is the old spearing penalty that was never ever ever called and that's one less body in the first half of the Georgia game too if in fact Harvey 
Yeah, I'm surprised. I'll be tossed out here. Yeah, I'll be shocked if the targeting is not upheld. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Number one is disqualified for the remainder of the game. And they're not cumulative, so it's not going to be a you know 30 yard penalty here. But what we're saying is, and what I was saying earlier is that the targeting was there. The lead hit out of bounds. As a player stepping out of bounds, if you go to make contact, I'm hard pressed to think a flag should come out in that area. But for sure, it was a good call by the official on the targeting element. Carpenter inside the 25 with the pirouette and then overthrows his intended receiver. That is incomplete. That's Isaiah Likely, one of the tight ends for Coastal Carolina. He had it. Well, likely is as open as you're going to see a receiver, especially down here as the field's condensed. And just overthrew him high and behind. trips up after a couple third down. It's a good point though, Taylor, by you is that so we've seen DJ Wanham limp off the field with an ankle injury. That's your leading sack player, edge player, tackles for loss with 13 a season ago. It didn't look like it was overly severe, so you hope he's back in time for what would be the most important contest, but from a depth standpoint, Nick Harvey, you would want him to be available as well, especially given the fact that you're thin at safety. backfield for Carpenter stands tall perfect throw near the 10 yard line to high lead. You can see the connection between these two. It makes sense. The chemistry that develops with a quarterback and a receiver over time. He takes the snap knows where he wants to go with it sets his feet delivers a strike in in high school Bryce Carpenter threw the ball to high lead for 252 receptions. I think that would develop a relationship. <laughs> First and goal. Marable cuts it back and gets maybe a yard or so. Second and goal. This big JJ Enak Bari came in to make the tackle. Yeah, he really flashed. You know, we've heard his name a lot since he's been on campus. We've been pleased with him. Young guy, they're gonna need him to play. Also seen Ernest Jones there, yep. who's another young guy from Wake Cross, Georgia. End zone, open but incomplete, overshooting to Keel Holmes. voice you hear is the head coach of the South Carolina Gamecocks uh, yelling words of encouragement. Is that us. what you would call that? Yeah, absolutely. He's trying to make sure that they maintain their edge. You don't ever stop coaching your guys. Never. He loses his edge. He knows that. It's a long season. These guys are going to have to provide depth. They're going to have to step up big. We've already seen maybe some injuries. He knows that these guys are going to have to, in some form or fashion, contribute over the course of this season. This communication there, and it's fourth down. You know, the thing I'll say about Will Muschamp, Stench, is his passion for football, his passion for what he does professionally, is as high as anybody you'll meet. I mean, it's just so obvious the time you spend around it. He just loves the game and all the relationships it builds. I'm glad, yeah, that was the one thing I was going to tag if you didn't mention it, because it's true, right? There's guys out there that love the game. I'm not sure that they love the, the players, the relationships that come with it. And Coach Muschamp, you could tell, it's a global passion. He likes every element of it. Biscardi connects on his third field goal of the day. 49-15, Gamecocks a couple minutes away from their first win. I thought last year, Stinch, that Tamu was the better fit 
in that offense that Matt Luke and company Phil Longo are, are running, and it seems like that's apparent today as they move the ball at will against the, the Red Raiders. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, man. Patterson makes his debut tonight, Stitch. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, we saw him in his first start uh, last year versus Arkansas. And just in the conversations, you could tell that he was what they were looking for the quarterback. Coming up in just under an hour, we continue with Eastern Illinois and Arkansas, the Chad Morris debut. Then it's the Dan Mullen debut in Gainesville against Charleston Southern at 730. SEC Network alternate channel has UT Martin against Mizzou. And the Blue Raiders at Bandy. To find the alternate channel in your area, go to secnetwork.com slash channel. And all four games also streaming live on the ESPN app. Exciting times in those programs. Some key changes, too. I mean, you think about it, Missouri, new offensive coordinator, Derek Dooley, the return of Drew Locke, one of the most heralded uh, quarterbacks that are going to be in the conference this year. Highly touted towards the next level. Slade Carroll with the carry. One thing that Coach Muschamp said today that you might see more of is guys that haven't been used as much in the past. It's one thing, this red shirt rule where you're allowed to play as many as four times, that can help true freshmen. He also said it could help older guys as well to use them if they need an extra year of eligibility. In a situation like that, but he's cautious of that as you, or at least aware of it, I guess, uh, as the season continues. Some of these guys can play three or four times and still be red shirted. Carroll again. Just short of the first down. Yeah, it was interesting because, you know, a lot of times you think the young guys, do you play them early? And that because it's been, the rule has been so relaxed this season, starting this season anyway, the coach Buschamp spun it towards the end of the year. And it makes all the sense in the world where, you know, over the course of the season, it takes its toll on some of your players. Guys go down. Maybe they need to share reps. And if the guy they need to share reps with, you were going to redshirt, well, now, you can get some play out of him and still preserve that year of eligibility late in the year. Carroll, a freshman from Lexington, South Carolina. Not far from here. He's got a first down run into Coastal Carolina territory inside the 35-yard line. Alex Spillum finally made the tackle. Nice run by Carroll. Bounces this run outside. Is able to pick up big yardage. All day, South Carolina's done a good job running the football. It's intended to go inside between the tackles. Nothing there. Carroll just bounces it outside and is able to outrun the second level defenders to get up down, up into the secondary. And a big gainer. He can go in and say, hey, Rico, guys, I had the longest run of the game. Yeah, no kidding. 28 yards. Well, check your six, boys. I'm coming after you. <laughs> this might be the last play of the game. As Carroll goes straight ahead and gets inside the 25-yard line, tackled by E.J. Porter. This is a complete performance from the Gamecocks. No doubt. And you know what? Offensively, you came out, you did exactly what you wanted to get done. There was some situation football that you were able to capitalize on. Your red zone proficiency is through the roof, well over 500 yards, what they've been able to do here today, and it was in a very balanced fashion. You have to be pleased so far with this offensive adjustment. Over 500 yards today, they didn't do that once last season. You know, Coach Muschamp said, coming in at halftime, I want more points. He got more points, he got more yards. And he is standing by with Chris Budden. Coach, you said you wanted more points. You got him. You had over 500 yards today, only your second time here at South Carolina to do that. What did you like best about your offense today? Well, I thought we were very efficient, uh, very efficient with everything we did in the run game and the pass game. We had one protection issue before half, scored on every possession the first half but one, and I think on the second half other than the end of the game and off the turnover. So uh, I thought we just executed really well. How lethal can this offense be when Jake's playing well and you have a healthy Debo and Rico? Well, when we can stay balanced, that's what's that's the key to me. And uh, we really have good skill people outside, and, and uh, Rico ran extremely well to that. As you evaluate this game, where do you need to make the biggest adjustments and improvements heading into next week? Oh, well, Georgia's got a really good football team. Obviously, the competition and coaching picks up, and we got to get ready for that. Thank you, Coach. All righty. 
South Carolina beats Coastal Carolina today by a score of 49 to 15. We're back with more from Columbia, but first, check in in the studio with Peter Burns, Gene Chiswick, and Chris Doring.